So we have shown before in multiple videos how to achieve proper rocker adjustment, rocker geometry, and push rod length. But we wanted to put those three things into one video so it's easier accessibility for you guys. You know, puts it all into one video. It's a nice little, little bundle, package deal. So this footage that we'll be showing you for the rocker adjustment and everything was taken from three-part series on the bad to the bone, 400 small block for Dave's Pro Touring 67 Camaro. So go ahead and check that out after this video. But without further ado, let's get into the rocker adjustment and enjoy. So in this video today, we're gonna uh, go in depth in rocker geometry. And this is pretty much, you can use it across the board on every engine. Craig's gonna show uh, part of it, how to how to get your right push rod length. We already achieved that on this. He'll go into depth on how he achieved the length. Okay, so now we're running through a uh, push rod geometry sweep. We uh, put a head on, we installed a couple test springs, we installed the rockers are going to run, the guide plates, we did a quick alignment to make sure that the guide plates are aligned. Set the lash at 20, which is what it's going to run when it's hot. And then we're using this tool that, uh, that I actually built this tool for checking a proper geometry. And we're actually going to be measuring the valve sweep. So we're going to do a quick run through here. As the uh, intake valve is opening, you notice that it's indicating we're at about about 90 thousandths uh, of a wide pattern so a lot of times people will use a sharpie to try to measure this but we're actually measuring how far it's sweeping and where it's sweeping so at full lift to, at uh, excuse me at half lift is around 90 and at full lift it's only back sweeping to about 75 comes back up to around 90 and then close so we're gonna go start putting longer push rod in here and that will start correcting our geometry. So now we added a hundred thousandths of push rod length. Now we're at eight one hundred, and we're gonna go through and run through the sweep again. So we're opening, and we're going to about, so we find peak, I kind of find that it's almost, almost 70 thousandths at uh, half lift. And then as we approach full lift, we're back sweeping, it'll stop, so we're about 43. So we went to about a 90 thousandths wide sweep to 70 thousandths wide sweep and then so we're going to close it we're going to put an even longer push rod again and try it again so we've arrived at our final uh, geometry and push rod length in this case we've uh, lengthened it 200 thousandths from where we started we're at 8 200 now and we'll run through a final sweep here so we're on the opening side and we're about a 50 thousandths sweep outward at half lift and then at approaching full lift we are about eight thousandths from from where we started, which is pretty close. We're, we're gonna, with based on push rod availability, we're not gonna be able to go up or down from there. So we're gonna stick with that 8200 number and then back out to 50 and close. So I just wanted to point out, so 7800 is a stock small block Chevy length. This is 8200 now. So we're 400 thousandths longer than a stock push rod so the one we started with was 800 thousandths that's why he was saying that we're only 200 thousandths longer than what we started with because we already started with a, a, a longer push rod so i also wanted to take a shot from this angle and we're going to look at the relationship of the rocker arm in the starting place this is with the valve closed we're looking at this angle here and as we open the intake rocker here at approximately that's it at half lift right there you notice you have a very favorable relationship. We almost want a true 90 degrees between the push rod and if you were to draw a straight line across here. And we're pretty close to that. And then at full lift, we're on the other side, approximately the same angle we started at, which is really, really good for a stud rocker engine where there's always some kind of a compromise. We get switch to the exhaust side. We're just gonna run through and try to zero in and show you what, what that minimum sweep looks like on the valve tip itself. So we're on the opening side now. All right, about half lift there. And then we're coming to full lift. And as we come to full lift, we're sweeping back towards the intake flange, close to where we started our sweep at. And at full lift, we're about five thousandths away from uh, where we started it at. And then we're gonna come back. As we close, they're doing that in reverse. Sweep out and sweep back in. And you notice it's, it's biased a little bit towards the exhaust side of the valve tip, but that's okay because you want to minimize your sweep and your sweep width or sweep pattern will trump the placement of the, uh, the roller tip. I mean, there's obviously extremes to all of this, but you always want to minimize your sweep and get the right geometry 
versus trying to keep it perfectly centered over the valve tip. Without one of these tools, you couldn't do this, so I would don't recommend at home to try to do it that way. But if you have a tool to accurately measure your sweep, you can get your replacement offset a little bit as needed to get the minimized sweep pattern. I'm gonna show on the um, guide plates here, pretty much all of them have some, some slop to it. So what you wanna do is get them snug down because you don't want to have this shoved over here and then your push rod is actually rubbing on your intake port depending on the size of your cylinder heads. If you tighten this one first, it's going to grab your guide plate and it's going to shove it over like this and it's going to shove your push rod up against your, your port here and it's going to be rubbing it the whole time. I mean, it can touch it as long as there's enough room in there that it's not crammed up against it and it is, as oil is able to go lube the push rod coming back down because this is going to move in the guide plate so we can touch the head coming up and down, but you don't want it guide plate shoved over and then it's, it's cramming on the head. The exhaust on these particular cylinder heads are all okay. They have plenty of, plenty of room. It's the intake ports that the problem is. So I actually want to tighten this one first because it's going to roll the guide plate over as you, as you tighten it. So I'll pull it up, make sure that my, I'm going to kind of bring it over this way a little bit. Make sure that my, my push rod is going to be able to come up. I can even grab the lifter and make sure that it comes up and down. The push rod should fall right back, right back down and follow the, follow the lifter. And snug these down. This is in a good spot. And now it's more held in place. That one looks good. It's touching the cylinder head, but it's got enough room for oil to get in there to lube it so it's not gonna gall it all up and grab all the aluminum. So here's, a, here's an example of what to watch for. This one I thought was in a good spot, so I snugged it down. And you can see I go to lift the, the lifter up here and see my push rod. It is stuck. It's jammed up against the guide plate and the, and the intake port here on the on the cylinder head. So I need to readjust that. So after you tighten them down, you need to go go back and check them all and make sure that, that you know it didn't twist on here and it's binding up your push rod. You see where I go to pull up the lifter here? Act like the, the lobes, you know, coming up. See my push rods all bound up here. So that's what you want to double check after you tighten them down. Make sure that it doesn't twist in there and bind up your push rod. That's what we're that's what we're trying to avoid. Another thing you want to watch out for too, these studs, the threads were a little on the longer side for these heads. A little interesting because all these studs on the head side is pretty much the same length. But um, they were bottoming out on the exhaust ports. See the intakes go into the runner so they have a little more, it still has a little more room. But the exhaust side, they were bottoming out in the, in the head. So we had to bottom, use a bottoming tap and we tapped each exhaust hole to try to get a little deeper and we're still having a problem. It was still a little tight when we had the guide plates on here. We go to tighten it down, it would still be a little loose. It wasn't really snugging. So we machined, we just did every one of them. What we take, probably a couple hundred thousand, pretty much a thread thickness off of the bottom of the bolt. We chucked up in the lathe so we didn't have to worry about bottoming out in the head and worry about, you know, crack the cylinder head or having another problem or it's not actually tightened down the guide plate. On the guide plates here, you want to check it but it's kind of a compromise. In order to get your push rod not to hit the intake, you're gonna you're gonna lose a little bit of your centering on your valve. So it, it, it possibly that the rocker is gonna kick over a little bit, and it's not necessarily gonna be the full roller on top of the valve. But that's a better outcome than having your push rod rammed up against your cylinder head and galling the whole time. You know, if it's tight and you can't get any oil in there, it's gonna grab that aluminum and it's just gonna keep building it up and building it up. And it's going to get to the point where you're going to have serious problems. You know, you can bend the push rod or to grab it. This whole rocker geometry, ge rocker geometry, 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 rocker geometry on a stud style rocker setup is going to be a compromise to get it to the, so everybody's happy for the most part. And another reason you want to check it after you get the rockers back on it, your push rod is down. It's not where it's going to be. So you can see where this is at rest right here. It's closer to the stud, but when we put the rocker on it, then it's going to bring it up to the pivot point in the in the rocker. So it's in a different spot. So it may may be fine here when you check it. You pull the lifter up, like oh yeah, everything's good. But we put the rocker on it, it's going to be a different position. So we want to check it, give make sure it gets some movement in here that it's happy with the rocker on it. So I'm going to finish this up here, get these on, make sure, give these a double check. Then I got to pull them back off. I'm going to get, lube everything, and then we'll get the Adjusting the valves part of it. So now I got the rockers laid out the way, pretty much the best I can get them. You know, like I said, there's gonna be a compromise. So I got all these here adjusted. So now I'm gonna adjust this side, 
It's kind of nice on the dark block here because it's kind of like a big block Chevy that the whole center of the camshaft is open. So you can see where the cam is because you want to adjust them on the bottom side of the lobe. You know, or you can go off the dampener, turn it over, and then adjust you know, the firing order. But I'm just going to go off of looking in the valley here because the intake's off of it. So I already got this one adjusted here. I'm going on this one. I got it rotated so I'm at the bottom of the cam. This camshaft calls for 20 thousandths on the intake and 22 thousandths on the exhaust on the, cl on the clearance. I'm just going to set them up right now as a baseline at all 18. I'm sure when I get it on the dyno and we get it running, we're going to check them again anyways and then we'll adjust them there. But setting it up just to get it so we can, we can fire it and get it to temperature in it because it's supposed to be adjusted warm. I'm just going to work my way down the line here. So we'll go to this one. See the cam lobe. This is the cylinder right here. See it's just, just got done going over full lift. Now we're going down. We're getting to the bottom side of the lobe. So right there is all the way at the bottom of the, the cam lobe. It's all the way closed. They're all snug right now because I ran them down by hand when I put them on. So just like a hydraulic cam, they got zero lash in them, which doesn't work out when you have a solid roller. So it has to have clearance in here before we can even start it. Because it'll hold the valves open and it won't ever, it won't have compression. Craig's double checking the valve lash. When you put the girdles on it, it changes the, the lash on the rockers. He's going through and resetting it. He's using the method of- the Exhaust base. valve opening and intake valve closing method. So when the exhaust valve just starts to open, we adjust the intake. And then if you're on, say, on the same cylinder, you run it through with exhaust opens, closes, intake opens, and the intake is about halfway to three quarters of the way closed, and then you go and adjust the exhaust. It's a little difficult the first couple times, but once you get in a rhythm, it uh, goes pretty quickly. So you don't do it front to back. So you gotta keep track of where you're at. Right. Because you, you go front, middle, you know. What I do a lot of times, I'll keep, if I'm using like a shaft rocker system, I use a Sharpie, and then when I do it, I'll just put a little mark on the rocker as I go down yeah. the line, so that way you don't get. You know where you're at. And we don't get lost. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, stud girdle off, since we don't have a, uh, a shaft system, we're using a regular stud system here. I'm gonna take this guy off. Just so we can expose the rockers and you can see a little closer what's going on. So in this case, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna be looking for this exhaust valve rocker to start opening. So we're gonna spin it around. The exhaust rocker just started to crack open. At that point, I'm gonna adjust the intake. So I take my fuel gauge here and slide it in. Loosen my poly lock, hopefully. Adjust, snug down. It's a little bit loose there. I'm gonna do a little bit tighter. I kind of want it to be nice and snug. You don't want it to fall out and you don't want to have to jam it in. You want it to just be nice and kind of almost pop out just a little bit. That one's good. Now I'm gonna continue turning the motor over to see if we're, since we're staying on the one cylinder. Exhaust fully opens, closes, intake opens, fully open and is about, right about half to three quarters of the way closed. Now we'll come over, see the exhaust is loose. Check it. It's a little tricky process with the poly locks here, trying to get uh, the feel just right of how much to loosen the, the jam nut and get the fuel engaged. So once again, it's got a nice little, kind of pops out just a little bit. You don't want it to be jamming in there. So this is what they call the exhaust valve opening, intake valve closing uh, technique for adjusting valves. So now we got the valves all adjusted and put the valve cover back on. You guys make sure you go down, you like, share, subscribe, leave a comment what you think about the figuring out the push rod length and the geometry and adjusting the valves. Is that the proper way? Give us, give us a comment. Come on back.